What's going on, guys? Today we on private wealth and relationships, and today I have Miss Dior, the CEO of House of Dior. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> so what's up with you? Nothing much. It's hot on this spring day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how long you been in business? Um, since two thousand twenty. So at the end of the year, it'll be four years. Mm. Yep. I started on my birthday, like officially, like launched my website and everything. But it took me probably like an entire year um, to actually like get the ground work done before I officially launched. What made you want to start getting into the business? Um, well, mainly because my mom, my mom's a businesswoman. She's mm -hmm. been a businesswoman her whole life. And um, she just kind of been pushing it on me. And especially once the pandemic hit, because um, I went to school to be a scientist. And mm. immediately, as soon as I graduated, I took like a break from school, work, everything just to, you know, chill and whatnot. And then once I was ready to get in the workforce place, COVID happened. So that was like January ish i had just left like a research conference and i was on the plane actually when they announced covid and um i guess i just had to like revisit my journal and see what i could do during that time since i couldn't really work and i just invested all my time into being a uh, beauty guru mm. <laughs> so combining like my knowledge of science with the actual cosmetics and making formulas and whatnot, and then expanding to other beauty areas that doesn't necessarily need science. Damn. You're the first person I ever heard say that. What about, like, being a scientist? Yeah. There's a couple crazy. scientists out here. <laughs> so, when in that field, like, what, like, what is it, like, what's the goal for that, like, being a scientist? Like, what do you, what all do you do? Research. Like, you know, it's kind of <laughs> like, it's under the, under the grid when it comes to, like, scientists. Like, you hear about them, but you don't really know exactly what they do well I mean I guess it depends on what project you working on like I've been on several projects and everything was different it was nothing like like my degree is in biology but the research that I was doing I did biochemistry I did you know like marine biology like it wasn't like I didn't have one specific project that I was like focused on and mm -hmm. I think that kind of deterred me from like really being a scientist in the first place because um, I didn't really know which field fit me best. Mm -hmm. And um, I think the last project was the marine biology one. It was okay. But being a scientist, you're literally doing the same thing every day until you, you know, come up with a new discovery or something. And sometimes you might not. So then you still present research on what you've been collecting, all of this data, analytics, and stuff like that. Mm. Mm. So you just felt like you wanted to just do something different out of the way? While well, you were still doing that? Um, well, I just wanted to be able to use my degree because I didn't want to feel like I just went to school for all this time and I'm, you know, like that would be like a waste of my degree. So I wanted to combine my love of science and, you know, my understanding of science to something else that also I was passionate about. And right. beauty is like the perfect venue, you know, like beauty is science. Science is the foundation of beauty. So mm, that's lit. Yeah. So, um, how do you, I see you have like your, um, luggage. Yep. These are my new bags. When did, the when did you, bags. <laughs> <laughs> you can pull it over off to you yeah, okay. off to so they can see it. Mm, that's crazy. Yes. Now this is a little bit different from beauty, but, um, I kind of always wanted to be a designer and, um, that's like a kid dream of mine. So I feel like right now I'm really like the little version of myself would be so proud of me because I actually did this. Like I always thought about that as a kid. I didn't necessarily want to grow up and be a scientist. Like that wasn't my, you know, goal in life, but it just happened because a lot of times when, you know, in black community, you're good at something, you do that because you're good at it and it can provide a source of income. But that wasn't my passion. I mean, sometimes you kind of get a little bit of passion from it because you're doing it so much and you're used to it and you know that you're good at it. But beauty and um, just designing completely is fashion. Is That's that's me. I feel like that's a great represent, representation of me. And so, like, 
I'm just following my kid dreams right now. Dang, that's dope. Yeah. That's dope. Who, how did you come up with the design? Well, actually, I had like a very simple design at first because I was just thinking like, you know, I want a bag. And I really wasn't thinking like, how can I make it exquisite until I got the sample bag? And I'm like, this is so boring. Like, what what is going to set my bag apart from other bags and make people see my bag as luxury, see my bag as quality, you know, like all of these things, not just to have a bag. And so... I think the like the the first push for the first bag was like seeing Teflar bags be so simple and um you know he was able to achieve you know such a mass success off a simple design. I was mm. like I thought that's what I was kind of going for but I'm like I'm not a simple person so I can't be simple. So I had to go above and beyond and make my bag different from everybody else's. Mm. Yeah. So you're trying to have like uh, your own store because it has that designer look, like no cap. Mm -hmm. It looks very, very like design, like it should be in a designer store. So is, is that what you're going for? Um, I mean, possibly, you know, I, I don't I don't necessarily want to say no or yes. But, you know, like the idea is to just be one of those black designers that people respect and love the designs and the quality and they continue for a long time, not just for the moment, you know, mm. like I feel like with beauty stuff, it's very like momentary because of beauty trends with purses and, you know, like designs and fashion. There might be trends and stuff, but like certain pieces last over time. Like recently I've been wearing clothes and shoes from my mom's closet that's literally like probably older than me. And I want to be able to create pieces that you can carry on to the next um, generation keep the carry on <laughs> no <That's lit. laughs> yeah have you traveled with your own bag yes it's been everywhere it's been in europe specifically paris france um nice france mm. um uh what else did i go i went to rome and i went to amsterdam but it's been through the united states it's ran through the united states have you like gotten to a point to where you you felt like this is how you're going to market like have you did like put like the the bag in like the middle of Rome and took a picture just so you can mark it? You know, I didn't think that that was what I was really going for in a sense when, cause I basically took myself on a brand trip mm -hmm. and um, the whole point of the trip was to see how convenient it, it is to use the bag because it is a luxury bag, but a lot of times luxury doesn't necessarily mean convenient. Mm -hmm. And the bag is convenient because of all the, you know, utilities and where you can put things and stuff like that. When you're in Europe, everything is so small and so compact, so you can't bring big luggage, mm -hmm. you know? You don't want to lose your bag. You're going to always have your bag because it's like it's right there with you and all of your everything that you need is is going to be in that bag. Like that's going to be your main bag, right? And so when people are backpacking through Europe, they're usually probably like a like a really big backpack on them. Instead, you're going to be carrying on through Europe and it's going to just be so much easier than carrying like traditional luggage and not having to worry about like, did I lose my bag or like all of these other like, you know, things that you kind of get like anxiety from when you're traveling because you out the country, you don't know where you're going for real. And it just gives you that sense of security, too. Mm. Right. So um, do you what, what do you feel like your background was? Do you feel like you had the parents that can help support you before you? started your business so it was like an easy push or was it like all you i have parents so my parents are business people so like that was really it like i mean i didn't see myself as a business person i actually mm -hmm. saw myself working for somebody for a long time like even though my goal as a kid was to be these things i just kind of really like once i got older it kind of like pushed it back like a lot of times like as you're a kid mm -hmm. you have these big dreams and then you get into reality in, in high school like you need to do this you need to be a doctor you need to be all of these stereotypical things and it kind of just pushed my dreams to the back and I feel like that's where I kind of like I don't want to say lost myself but lost what I really wanted to do and something that was going to make me happy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so what is your what do you feel like your your end vision really looks like for you when it comes to like business, because you've been in it for like four years. Um, my end goal, I guess, generational wealth and to like actually have a business that's continuing on like longevity is like the ultimate goal because 
so many people start businesses and like they fail within the first six months, you know, mm. like I want my business to thrive, even though we might change different methods and, you know, stay with the times, but not necessarily like actually fall off and like completely close out. Like, I think that's just something that's always going to be on my mind. Like I want it to be when I'm dead, the business is still going on, right. you know, like that's, that's the ultimate goal. Have you had a, um, a, a crazy major failure in your business major failure like where you was like dang like it just ain't going right for me right now it makes you feel overwhelming yes i did have like something like that okay so like i was running ads on facebook mm -hmm. and facebook deleted my like whole like ad account for my business for no reason and like i'm not a person that takes like a no and like no explanation like you gotta explain to me everything why and so like i was on the phone with them they were like uh, we'll do an investigation. They did the little investigation. And it was like, we don't have an answer for you. Mm. And I'm like, what? Like, this is like, like all my data analytics and stuff from these ads. At the time, I don't think I was, nobody was really on TikTok like that besides like people that was just dancing. So I was mainly focusing on Facebook and Instagram ads. So it was just, that was like a big punch in my chest. I feel like, like, mm. what am I going to do? You know, like that was... That was the one, and it hurt because like, I couldn't do nothing. Right, like it wasn't a necessarily like immediate solution. It was just like I had to like really take a step back and figure out like what else can I do, and that's kind of how I got into more content creation for real, for real. Because at the time, it was just like you know ad type of content, and not necessarily like actually engaging with my audience and creating content around lifestyle and actually just using my products in different ways instead of like, oh, I'm selling you this lip gloss. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It was more so like I'm just casually using my stuff or, you know, just more lifestyle incorporation. So the people were like, oh, I want that. Without me directly selling to them, um, it's just like a different way of like getting people to buy things. Mm. Do ads really work? Yeah. <laughs> they do? Yeah. You never used ads before? Uh one time for my classes and it just it felt like bots was in my DM, but it really it was real people, but it just felt like bots for some reason. Mm. No, they work. They expensive though. That's the thing. You want to make sure you have a great return on your investment because mm. it's literally an investment. Have you sold out due to ads? Um, I think I sold out through natural organic traffic from my page. So mm -hmm. like um, one of my most popular products prior to the bag was Her Growth Oil. I didn't necessarily need to, like, I have a lot of products, but I was basically organizing how much I want to spend on certain products. If my natural organic traffic was pushing sales for something, I wouldn't need an ad for it. So with my Her Growth Oil, that was one of those products. And I could just basically post on my own content without pushing or boosting the content and then um it would just naturally sell out mm -hmm. like i would just post pictures in my hair or getting my hair done and this is just my natural hair not just like weave or anything and that would just immediately sell out within the day before the day was open so, so yeah. being a scientist like you know what to go in yeah and then Dang, my mom my mom crazy. studies herbs so that's how we came up with the whole um her growth oil because my mom was actually experiencing a lot of like just not necessarily she didn't go through nothing where it, her hair was falling out but it, she just noticed there was like a lot of changes in her hair as she was getting older mm -hmm. and she just was like let's do this let's try this <laughs> and it was like a combination of her herbal her herbs and my science brain that's what i like to call it everything organic everything's organic it has yeah. to be organic to yeah it. okay yeah you know some people be mixing the wrong no everything is like the real deal yeah that's lit yeah that's lit that's lit any new businesses that's like on the rise new businesses on the rise yeah <laughs> i don't want to tease i don't like to tease i like to just pop out oh I don't like to give nobody no ideas, even with the bags. Like, I had the bags for over, actually, I've been working on the bag since 2021. Mm -hmm. But I perfected the, the bag in 2023. But I didn't release it until the end of the year mm -hmm. to let people know I was dropping the bag. But I don't like to do any type of teasers when it comes to anything. I just like to pop out with it. Mm. 
So for the people out here that don't know much about like starting a business, it's a lot of women out here want to start business. Actually, it's more women out here that has businesses more than men mm-hmm. from the researches. So what would you tell them, you know, to do to like really start a real business in in line? Like what would be those steps? I wouldn't say it's like a like a manual because again, my mom was a businesswoman, but the foundation, the simple stuff like getting an LLC, getting a bank account, EIN, that stuff, you know, you can just simply Google or YouTube. Mm-hmm. And but my mama told me that, you know, so that was easy to do. But after that, like coming up with a marketing plan, coming up with just like branding, period. My mom owns daycares. Mm-hmm. That business doesn't translate into beauty, you know. So I couldn't really get the necessary help I need for. Like those type of things, it was kind of something I just kind of had to experience, but I'm always a student first. So I'm willing to learn from other people and their experiences. And I'm just searching for knowledge consistently. I don't stop and feel like, oh, I know everything about my business and I'm so secure because I'm making enough money. There's always more. My last name is more, by the way. So I'm always going to want more. (laughs) So that's just been my motto my whole life. Like I always, I'm I'm, going to want more. There's more. (laughs) Don't settle, huh? Never. Never, yeah. ever. Never, ever. Um, yeah. Like, what motivates you and drives you to keep going? Mm, I don't know. Like, I, could, I I would say, like, obviously, like, family and stuff. But that's just, that's so, that's so stereotypical. Mm-hmm. But honestly, it's just, like, reaching goals is the, I don't know, catalyst. It just makes you just, for me, I get an adrenaline rush trying to, achieve a goal because I know I'm going to do it Mm -hmm. but it's like something I've never done before I got to do it I got to do it I got to do it that keeps me going I don't never feel like I can just be satisfied with one thing it's always going to continue like I'm just keep leveling up yeah that's life I don't think we we get we want to reach our goals and once we reach our goals we we not really fully fulfilled yeah I don't think I for me I just don't think I can ever be be fully fulfilled because that's just that's just how it's built. They put that in my code. I don't know why. No, that's life. In <laughs> yeah. Like people would be saying, I want a million dollars. But, but some people like mediocre stuff and like they be, they be happy with it. And it's like some, some people like me might get mad. I don't do this, but they might get mad. Like, Oh, you you're selling. You can get so much more. You can't judge people because they want a mediocre life or they feel like they met, they go and they don't want to go more, mm. go harder. You know, like that's just, you know, certain people that's like that, but I wouldn't put, how I live my lifestyle and what I, you know, my goals onto other people. Like that's, a, that's very hard for other people to like deal with. They see somebody doing something, they compare in their life. Like oh, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. You should be doing that. No, that's not how life works. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. You know, people always want to know like the background of like how everything started. Cause they feel like people just be so sharp with their answers and, mm-hmm. Like I had this conversation with um, Nikki, who you know, mm-hmm. and she be she say like people always short short answer things like when it comes to like getting where you want to go, like they don't talk about the struggle and the hard things like that they went through, like the stress and you know yeah. the anxiety of trying to get where you want to go. Do you feel like you had it like knowing that you had like your mom and your family to like help you understand all of the things that you you know, needed to know because you basically had like a shortcut because your mom is a businesswoman. I wouldn't say it was a shortcut. It was just, you know, information just being transferred. Like if you were neck working out in the world and you found somebody that could show you, you know, the foundation of creating a business, then yeah, you know, you're going to take that knowledge, wouldn't you? Exactly. But that, that, I wouldn't say that's a shortcut. That's just like somebody not just not necessarily just seeking the knowledge, but actually receiving that knowledge and doing something with that. Mm. Because not only did she you know, give me this foundation of like how to start a business, you know, you can get that from other people. You can get that from watching YouTube videos. Mm. So it doesn't necessarily make it a shortcut. The shortcut part is where the money came in. Yeah, <laughs> that's the shortcut. You know, like I was blessed enough to have my mama give me some money, but I also drained my savings. So I took a bet on myself took that risk, got some money from my parents, combined it, and I bought out. So, mm, How did you build discipline to know how to manage your money? That took over time. I didn't just immediately know because because I'm an over-the-top type of person, mm-hmm. I was spending a lot of money in the beginning, like 
this is basic. This is, you know, me. And this is how I want to separate my brand from other brands. And it was like, okay, you got a budget here. You know, you can't do everything over the top. Some stuff could have been simple. And I, I do, I think about that a lot. Like how much money I was spending in the beginning. Like, like I remember the Airbnb um, that I rented for my first photo shoot was like $4,000. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't need to spend four thousand dollars on a just the Airbnb, you know what I'm saying? But the way the video turned out, it was so luxurious, and it very it pretty much captured you know my target audience from that immediately. But I feel like I could have found something a little bit more, not necessarily pricey, but like just affordable <laughs> because that was a lot, right? Like, I think that's how I am. Like, it's- yeah, so I had to learn that along the way, and especially when it came to the ads, because that was all prior to the launch of the business. So all, getting the products and all of that, that's spending the money. Then you got to spend money on actual ads and making sure you have money coming in. So mm-hmm. it was just something I had to learn along the way. Like, oh, I can't spend money on this like that. I can't spend money on this, you know. And it, it just took time. It didn't just, I didn't immediately know because I was new to it. Like, regardless of my mom being a business person, she wasn't experiencing the same stuff I was experiencing. Mm-hmm. Like, it just, yeah, it was totally different. What's the most money you feel like you put in ads at one time? I mean, it's not necessarily like that. It's Isn't like it? some, It's like something you kind of see on your own. So you put out an ad or whatever. You don't necessarily have to set it at like a maximum. You can but I have people that run the ads for me now, so I don't mm. need to like pay attention to the details. But there is a budget, you know. So there's a budget for whatever the product is, whatever the time frame is too. Because I have a lot of products, and all of them are not going to get pushed on ads all the time. It's just like, okay, this is the popular product for the time being. We're focusing on this right now. All the other avenues can be, you know, made through organic traffic. Mm-hmm. You got a team. I mean, it's like a little small team. My sister helps me out a lot, and um, I have an assistant. But, yeah. Oh, I have a graphic designer. So, How did you find an assistant? Because I be feeling like it's tough finding a, a well, an assistant. Well, I mean, I think I made like a tweet or something like, oh, I need an assistant. Because it was like, this was in the very beginning. But um, one of my close friends volunteered and was like, I'll do it. And I was like, kind of nervous at first because it's like business pleasure, you know. Exactly. But... At the same time, with an assistant, you need a lot of trust. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's something you can't necessarily get immediately from people that's outside of your, you know, day-to-day basis and whatnot. And I trust her with my whole entire life. So I feel like I had the perfect person to be my assistant compared to, like, just some random person that I found off the internet, you know? Exactly. Do you feel like it made your life easier? Uh, Yes, because I'm, I don't. I don't like to micromanage, but um, I kind of like will bounce back in and be like, okay, I like things like this. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But it, I have to like, I had to learn, you know, to like let people do their job and, you know, just delegate, but don't go too crazy mm-hmm. because I can do that. Like I like to be hands on with pretty much everything, but I try to give people their space too. Like my mom is very influential in my business. My sister is too. And a lot of times they tell me, like, I don't like to listen to their ideas that can, like, really take off or whatever the case may be. My mama is always going to have an idea. Like, you should do this. You should do that. This is what you need to do. But it's like, okay, girl. Okay. Like, I hear you. But a lot of times she be right. Mm. I just don't be want to listen immediately. Because exactly. <laughs> I like to be right. <laughs> <laughs> so all, are all of your products on the same website or is it different yeah I, my products are on my actual website house and then it's on tiktok instagram facebook you know you can still buy through them channels i think i even still have like an etsy account too like if whatever it is the platforms is people can access it through all of those so all what are all the products it's a long list uh, <laughs> yeah it is i started off with shampoo and conditioner um, edge control, bonnets, edge wraps. Edge wraps is just like what you put over your edges. Mm-hmm. Um, what else? Uh, press on nails. The bags, of course. I'm just trying to th- think in my head. Like it's a lot. 
I can't even. I, I have over like twenty products. Oh, that's good. Yeah, maybe twenty five. Yeah, mm, that's a lot to maintain. Eyeliner. I had lip gloss that I formulated myself, but it was actually very expensive to do. Um, so I kind of took a step back on that. You got any collaborations with other businesses? Um, no, I've I've never collaborated with like another business. Like I've collaborated with influencers. Um, but not necessarily like another business. Influences to promote your businesses. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. How often you do that? Um, not too often. I think uh, I try to find people that are like natural influencers, not necessarily like what you expect to be an influencer, but people just like engage with their content and like they see you wearing something. Like people that are like trendsetters. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. I try to find those type of gems not necessarily the typical i'm a content creator by this product you know something that's natural but it's it's not all the time but every now and then when i feel like i found somebody because mm. i'm picky now you can sell your you can sell any product especially your bag you can if you do the if you get the right content creator that can actually yeah. utilize it the right way like do a commercial have you ever thought about a commercial yeah, I definitely want to do a commercial for the bags. I actually had like a whole like project laid out for the bags originally. And I kind of just went and took a step back because I feel like I always do like a video shoot or a photo shoot. Um, and I just wanted to do something different. Like mm -hmm. I, I don't want to necessarily sell, like direct sell the product to somebody, you know? Like I want it to happen naturally. People see me use it. People, people know that I travel a lot. So I wanted to to get those sales from that, you know, not necessarily, oh, she always have these extravagant video shoots. Like sometimes it's just like, eh. And I've been making like a lot of just different content and people love that content compared to the videos. I think like mm -hmm. the, um, the analytics show is a big difference. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's doing well. That's yeah. But good. I would still, I would still want to do it. Like I'm not, against it like i have i still have the whole idea of how i want the commercial to be but i'm just not focused on it right now because i feel like it's spring people are traveling the most summer you know they really want to see people actually use the bag not mm -hmm. necessarily i saw it on a commercial and it looks nice because i think people will see my bag on whatever platform it is and be like oh my god that's a nice bag but mm -hmm. what Again, like what makes people want to buy the bag? It'll be the immediate first look for a certain demographic. The second demographic is going to be the utility. Like immediately once they see the utility of how it's opened up and all of that. I'm like, oh, I need that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it's like it's a want at first when you see the bag on the outside. Like it's a nice bag. But what is going to make you really want the bag once you open it up? Facts. Yeah. Facts. Facts. For sure. So you're getting deep into content now? Yeah, I'll be making all type of content, not just with my bags, lifestyle content. I just vlogged my whole trip to um, Europe. But I be doing that a lot, and I never edit my videos because I be so lazy. Like, editing short content clips is so easy and very mm -hmm. fast for me. But, like, when it comes to longer videos, I be like... It makes you lazy, tired. Yeah, it just, I'm like, oh, my God, I'm still doing... Like, I, I did one for um, Jamaica, too. The video is still in the editing platform. And I was I was editing. I was like, okay, I'm going to do a little bit every day. And then I was just like, I can't do it no more. Right. I don't know. Like, it's just. You trying to build a YouTube platform? Yeah, I have a YouTube. So that's the thing. That's why I need to, like, con I need to get serious about my YouTube more than anything. Mm. I feel like whether it's with my actual, like, bag content or just products or just like my lifestyle period, I feel like I need to be more on YouTube. That's a real check. Yeah, it is. 